Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and this is the FlashForge Adventurer 5X. FlashForge's answer to multi-material 3D printing. Now let me just get it out of the way right here at the front. Do I like this machine? Oh yes, I absolutely love this machine. Is it a perfect experience? No, but the little imperfections that I found in my exploring with this machine can totally be fixed after opening it because the hardware is solid. It's the firmware and the software that need a little bit of work, but they can 100% fix that and are working on it right now. So there's a good chance that by the time you get one of these, those problems will already be worked out. Now, this is going to merit a comparison to a certain other brand of multi-material 3D printing. And let me give you my opinion on that right now. Is this as good? as the Carbon X1? Well, definitely not. But it's more than a quarter of the price of that. And I think that this would be more comparable to comparing it to the P1. And is this as good as the P1? I think it's actually better and at less than the P1 is. So honestly, I, I do recommend this machine, but let me tell you a little bit about my experience with it. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and if you're new to 3D printing or just want something new to do with 3D printing, you're in the right place. I hope that you'll stick around. That means hit subscribe. And also, maybe come join me on my Discord where I've got a great community of people who are doing great things with 3D printing and helping others do great things as well. I hope to see you there. So where to begin with the Adventure 5X? Well, I suppose it starts with the unboxing process. And I will say, compared to other Adventure series 3D printers, like the Adventure 3 and Adventure 4, the 5X felt like a lot more unboxing process. There were things that needed to be attached and things that needed to be put together that you don't need to do with other Adventurer 3D printers. However, it was all extremely well documented and by following along with the manual, it was no problem whatsoever to figure that all out. Then I loaded up for filaments and started the multi-material print that was already pre-built on there. This little articulated koi fish. Now, I will say it printed extremely well, except for some problems that I had where the filament that I loaded in got snagged a little bit, but that was my fault. Otherwise, this print turned out fantastic, if uh, just a little bit wasteful on the amount of purge waste that it produced. Honestly, just tons of it for this print, especially when you compare it to the size of the 3D print itself. It's not impressive and definitely something that might very well put people off of multi-material 3D printing. However, this is not a print that I slice myself, so there might be opportunities to fix this. But before I started playing with that, I had some other prints that I needed to do. I needed to take the tools that they sent me and make a print-a-block tool holder. So I made some organizer prints and did that, and I did it in this Sliceworks carbon fiber PLA. Now, I've never used carbon fiber filled PLA before, and I found it super easy to use. It doesn't really, I mean, you tell the 3D printer that it's carbon fiber, you tell the slicer that it's carbon fiber, and super easy, barely an inconvenience, and it prints great. Now, I did have, with the carbon fiber PLA, a couple of failed prints, and that gave me an opportunity to see, is this really stronger than regular PLA? Well, I mean, I'm not a machine, and so I'm not actually measuring that resistance, but that seemed harder than regular PLA to break, though I was still able to break it, even though it was, you know, printer block, so small connectors. But overall, it does feel stronger than regular PLA, although it does also melt in the sun like regular PLA, so... Either way, I was excited to play with this filament, and you could tell I've used most of the spool. I had a good time with it, and this printer printed it like a champ. In fact, for my third print, I made a 
toolbox, basically a super big version of the tool holder with more printer block organizers. Now I want to take a quick detour here and talk about FlashForge's new slicers. See, FlashForge for the longest time has had their own branch of slicer called flash print and it was made specifically for their 3d printers now that was a criticism for a lot of people but for the most part that criticism came down to it's just not what i'm used to but if you got used to it it worked perfectly for all of their 3d printers and it enabled flashforge to do things that nobody else was doing Things like making an IDEX 3D printer with the Creator Max 2 that actually interacted well with the slicer. You didn't have to go to the printer and say, hey, this print I sliced this way and this print I sliced this way. The slicer told the printer what mode to print in and so it was able to do everything just out of the box and great. And I really appreciated FlashForge for making that dedication to having their own slicer. However, with this 3D printer, they have taken a branch of Orca Slicer and used it to make the Adventure 5X. And they have made that particular branch of Orca Slicer backwards compatible with their 3D printers back to the Adventure 3 and possibly beyond. However, I couldn't help but feel just a little pang for them giving up on their own slicer and turning to what everybody else is using. However, that is kind of the FlashForge way because their Creator 2, their first 3D printer that took them into the market, is basically just a replicator 2 with a, another coat of paint and iterated just a little bit. That's what FlashForge does. They take other people's ideas and they iterate them and they iterate them extremely well. So I can't really complain about them abandoning their slicer when everybody else is going to Orca Slicer. So okay, I'll get used to being able to use the same tool that I'm used to on everything else with them now. Actually, that's not a bad thing at all. And speaking of this new slicer, being a branch of Orca Slicer and coordinated with the 3D printer, they've made it so that you can stream your prints over the network, over the LAN, absolutely flawlessly. But that's not the only option for getting prints to here. If you want to just do it over sneaker net, they've got a big USB port for you to use. No tiny micro SD cards, so that's fantastic. But FlashForge has also created their own online streaming print service that streams through Orca Slicer, through their service to your 3D printer, if your 3D printer is on a different network. And I tested this out and it worked flawlessly. It worked as seamlessly and easy as any other print service that I've used. But what impressed me is that if the 3D printer and the computer is on the same network, it doesn't seem to use the print service. It streams through the network and ignores the print service, which is the way to do it. Now, one thing that FlashForge wanted me to demonstrate was how well this 3D printer printed in flexible TPU material. So they sent me a couple of spools of their own TPU 95. And if you've never used TPU before, it's a soft material, something that seems like it shouldn't print good parts with. It should only be used for like squishy fun prints, but no, it actually prints like real prints extremely well. Though, of course, the first thing that I printed with it was one of my teddy bear balloon animals that I made a couple of videos back. And I printed this hollow so it it squishes and it flexes and it's it's a lot of fun for a 3d print and yes this machine printed it like a champ but it's also a multi-material 3d printer so what if this print is two tpus white tpu and purple tpu in the same print and yes i use supports this time i tried linear supports they removed a little bit better than the tree like supports and it printed great and it's flexy and it's squishy and it's a lot of fun so yeah you can even print multi-material tpu that is something i have never tried in any other multi-material 3d printer and it worked a champ of course, this flexi print did produce flexi waste and quite a lot of it. Now, it was interesting to me that when I looked at the print settings by default, it already has a multiplier of 0.3 on your print settings. And I assume that's because it's such a small area that it needs to change to. But looking at this waste, it's pretty clear that 
I could probably half that number and still get good purges because almost half of this purge is very clearly already done purging and doesn't need to purge anymore. It is fun though. Squishy flexy waste. I've never done that before. Now, the multi-material system on this 3D printer is a little bit different than others that you might see. You might notice that it's not a big box on top that you feed the filament into. It's just a little box on the side that the filament feeds into. It's actually much more similar to the A1 or A1 Mini's multi-material system, but that's actually good because it joins the filament right close to the nozzle, meaning that the changes are just there, 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 and it's, it's not so much retraction as other multi-material system. They call this the IFS system, which I have no idea what that stands for because I don't know how IFS says I print with multiple materials. But regardless, I think it's a great solution and so far it's working great. But as I mentioned before, FlashForge is doing the usual FlashForge thing of cribbing notes from other 3D printers that get the job done. And their filament purge system is a purge system that goes out the back and looks very similar, although with a lot of changes that people have made to existing multi-material systems built in out of the box, including a better wiper and I, I just a couple of things that just make it feel better. But this thing is so similar. In fact, let me check real fast. Let me grab this. This is the purge bucket system that I use for my other multi-material 3D printers. I like this one because it catches the purge out the back and sends it to the side and then it has a nice little removable tray. Now I've modified this from the original design to add more magnets so that this will snap in there and hold. But I'll put on the screen who made the original right there because I can't remember at the moment. But I wonder if this one would work right here with this. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty darn close. Their purge system is a little bit taller and uh, there's a screw in the way of it. So I might have to take this design and modify it a little bit to make a Adventure 5X version of it. But I think that could totally be done. And yeah, purging out the side, that's much better. So I'll have that change coming real soon. Now, I did mention that my experience with this machine wasn't perfect, and there is one flaw with this machine at this time. But again, it's a software problem that they'll be able to fix, but I need to mention it. If you have loaded up all four of these with different colors, in fact, different materials entirely, and you've told the system what's in what slot the way that you're supposed to, then you go over to your slicer and you slice it, but you slice it for uh, let's say that I've got flexible loaded in slot four. So you say I'm printing in flexible, but then you've got PLA loaded in slot one and maybe pet G loaded in slot two. And you tell the slicer, okay, I'm printing with flexible. That's just the only material that you've got up there. Then you slice it, send it to the printer. It will print from slot two, whatever's in slot two. And hopefully you can see the problem with this. You are printing with settings that were made for the wrong material. It could cause a jam or it could cause a problem. Now the workaround solution for this is real simple. Just add a second material in the slicer. It doesn't matter what that material is. It doesn't matter anything. As long as there are two slots in the slicer for the materials, then you can set whatever material you're using in slot one, slicer print, as you normally would, choose the material and it will work properly this time. I don't know why their slicer wants to have multiple materials before it'll let you choose a single material from any slot, but that's the workaround for now. And like I said, it's probably fixed by the time you're watching this. Now there is something else about this printer that I'm hoping they address in the future, but uh, it's not enclosed. There are no enclosures on this machine whatsoever. They say that they are offering a kit and I can see that there are places to plug a kit into so that we can have that in the future. And if not, I'm sure that the community will come up with a solution for this as well, provided that this 3D printer becomes popular enough, which I don't see why it wouldn't for all the good that it is already doing. In fact, this 3D printer has kind of become my workhorse machine. Anytime I have a quick print that I need to fire off because I could just load it up with whatever, it's already ready to go. And I can start that print from a remote location without problem. I love this machine and I'm using the heck out of it. 
But that's it for the Flash Forge Adventurer 5X. I really like it. I really recommend you check it out. And that's it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, find somebody else to take care of. Because we all need each other. I'll see you next time. As any other web service that I'm used to using. Simon!